Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here in Ghana. On The Point of View, we pick the right topics, we get the right guests, we ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. Tonight, the National Cathedral is back on the agenda. It has emerged that uh, on the 31st of March, a uh, letter was written by Minister of Finance, Ken Ophiriata, directing payment of 25 million Ghana CDs to a company for works on the National Cathedral. This appears to fly in the face of earlier promises that the cathedral will not be funded by state money. Tonight, we'll be discussing the implications of what has happened. We'll be finding out what this means and what else is left to know about this. I have a very interesting panel. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <music> Welcome back. So tonight we look at the issues surrounding the National Cathedral. This will be the second time we discuss it on this show. In August, we spoke to the uh, president or the head of the Secretariat for the National Cathedral uh, who explained the basis and also progress with the work. Tonight I have in studio the MP for North Tong. is the person of Samuel Kujatwa Blackwise. He joins us live in studio. Welcome to the show. <coughs> thank you, Ben. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, it's good to have you. Always a pleasure to be here. We will also be joined by John Kuma, who is the Deputy Minister of Finance and MP for the Ejisu constituency. He's in transit. He will join us to speak to us on some of the issues to be raised. But let me start with you in studio. You've been on a crusade against this. You put out two documents. I think the first one suggesting the payment of the 25 and the second one an earlier payment of 32 million. So which documents are these and why are you convinced that something untoward is going on? So let me uh, convey warm regards to all your distinguished viewers across the globe. Mm. I must, from the outset, put matters in proper context. Mm. I am not against Ghana having a national cathedral. I am not the Antichrist. You were in Presec with me, Bernard. You know that I was vice president of the Scripture Union, head of the evangelical team. I still believe in Jesus the Christ. I believe that he is the salvation. Mm. He is the beginning and the end. Mm. He is the only one who can guarantee us a place in heaven. Mm. I have not lost those values. So it is not about Ghana having a national cathedral, even though the concept of national cathedrals began in the pre-Westphalian Treaty period. That is before the Westphalian Treaty was signed in 1648, where there was no separation between church and state. Many people forget that uh, initially, from the outset of mankind, the church was so dominant and so powerful, and that the church ran the affairs of state. And so it had to take first the 80-year war, and then the 30-year uh, war, secondly, between the Dutch, uh, and then who were mainly Protestants, and then the uh, Spanish, who were Catholics, who led that European war, until the called for truce and signed the Treaty of Westphalia. And then we were ushered into the era of statehood where philosophers like Edmund Beck argued that now there should be no mixture. The pulpit and politics should not converge. They should always be, be, be apart. Separation of church and state. Separation of church and state. Mm. So this whole national co cathedral concept, that's where it came from. And in that era, there was a lot of competition. That is why in, in Russia, when the, uh, the, the famous uh, cathedral was, well, the, the, the Basel Cathedral was, was constructed, it was under the reign of Ivan IV, who was known as Ivan the Terror. Because after the architects designed that cathedral, he had all of them, you know, uh, 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 made blind. He, 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 he virtually removed their eyes. That's, that's the mythology. So that they will not replicate in other European countries or European capitals. So, mm -hmm. that, so there was such a competition, uh, you know, for every country to show their might. And there again, you see the role of slavery, how they had cheap labor, you know, our 
uh, forebears who were involved uh, carrying all of the, mm. the, 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 the wood and the stones and all of that to build all those giant edifices, 11th century, 12th century, all the way to the 17th century. So th th that is the historical, historical antecedent. But certainly, after the Westphalian Treaty, some countries, you know, based on nostalgia, wanting to also show that, you know, um, mm. they can beautify their landscape, their skylines, also decided to, you know, that's why Washington, for example, came up with the, the, the Washington National Cathedral. The, the interesting thing is that if you look at the history of all of these cathedrals, it took some of them 600 years, 700 years to build. The, 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 the fastest ones, like the one in France, Notre Dame, took 26 years. Uh, the Washington one, uh, which are present, appears enamored by, took 82 years to, to, to you know, complete from beginning to end. Um, you take the one in Milan, for example, it took about 74 years. So one wonders why Ghana is in such a rush, such a haste, and we are not getting it right. So the fundamental objection that we are raising is about the constitutional breaches, the violent violation of the 1992 constitution. You see, this is it is in, the, in, in the concept of setting up a national cathedral or in the approach to building it? The approach to, to building it. So I've said that fundamentally, as Christians, it's nice to have a national cathedral, interdenominational service. This also, we are told, comes with other advantages of, uh, you know, a, a, so let me just a meeting The positions you're articulating, are they the position of the NDC, the minority, or Absolutely. of Kukujetua Black? Of, of, of the NDC caucus in parliament. Okay. Uh, so the this... caucus is not against the concept yes. of a, a national cathedral? Yes, per se. Per se. In, the, the principle of having a national cathedral. Even you are, you are though not we it. are not against Even though it started as the president's personal pledge to God, uh, we, I mean, he's, he's now nationalized it. It's, it's not the Akufuado Cathedral. He's calling it a national cathedral. And he's going to bequeath it to the nation after all. I mean, um, he, he, he's going to leave it behind. It's going to serve all of us if it is done well. Now, we are concerned about the processes, law, mm. the, 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 the rules being followed. And, okay. and I bring you to, in that context, Article 178 of the Constitution. Article 178 provides that no monies shall be withdrawn from the consolidated fund except a, to meet expenditure that is charged on that fund by this constitution or by an act of parliament, or b, where the issue of those monies have been authorized by an act, by an appropriation act, or two, by a supplementary estimate approved by resolution of parliament passed for the purpose or by an act of parliament enacted under Article 179 of this constitution. Mm. So the constitutional provisions are very clear that no public official, nobody in this country, has the right to dip their hands in public funds, in the consolidated fund, and take out money without parliamentary approval. Mm -hmm. Now, a certain background is important. As you rightly said at the introduction of this program. This whole National Cathedral project began as a personal pledge of the president. He said that that is a pledge he made to God, that if God blesses him with the presidency, it will be like a Thanksgiving offering. We commend him for his personal pledge. So that pledge was re-echoed by the trustees of the uh, the, 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 the cathedral. Remember that they set up the, Is it the, board of the, the, the board of trustees as, as a private entity. And if you look at the, the communication that they put out, as recent as I have a copy here from uh, Ghana Web, August 27, 2018. It says, immediate past general secretary, the, head, the headline is, government not using taxpayers' money to build national cathedral. So it says, immediate past General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Kwabna Opuni Frimpong, says government will not pay for the yet-to-be-built National Cathedral. Speaking on Asempa FM's eco show on Monday, Dr. Opuni Frimpong said President Akufuado will only facilitate the acquisition of land for the project, but will not finance it as is being speculated in the public domain. But this is 2018. So this is 2018. Then in 20... Later, that, that same year, 15th November 
2018, when the Honorable Finance Minister Ken Oforiata came to Parliament to present the 2019 budget, we observed for the first time a shift in policy, in mindset. That's when he said, I have a copy of the budget speech here, budget speech of the Government of Ghana 2019 financial year, presented to Parliament on Thursday, 15 November 2018 by Ken Oforiata, Minister of Finance. The theme of the budget was a stronger economy for jobs and prosperity, in Punto budget. At paragraph 157, this is what the finance minister told us in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, the President is determined that the building of the National Cathedral would not put undue financial burdens on the state. He has therefore proposed a partnership between the state and the Ghanaian Christian community, both at home and in the diaspora. The formal launch of this national fundraising campaign is slated for December 28, 2018 in Ghana and February 2019 in the United States. This National Cathedral Partnership Framework operationalizes and indeed is a practical expression of the social partnership envisaged to foster participatory development of country as our so, collective So that's goal. a clear hint that, <laughs> that this is going to be both state and church exactly, working together. Exactly. So when they announced the shift in the presentation of the 2019 budget, we then observed that, look, this is a major announcement. So we went through the entire 2019 budget and discovered that there was no allocation. Despite this text, the wording, Mm. as presented. When you go through the numbers, there was no allocation at all. So I have in my hands here the hands out of the budget debate of mm. the 2019 budget debate in Parliament. Wednesday, 28 November 2018. Mm. Dominic Ayeni led the charge that day. And I need your permission so to So did he to oppose quote. the partnership concept? Or what did he say yes, in the debate? I, yes, I'm going to read it verbatim, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, I'll read it uh, uh, quickly. I know time is not our, our friend. So I'm reading from column 2892. Dr. Ayeni speaking. Mr. Speaker, I would want to raise a critical issue of accountability that arose in the course of the presentation of the budget statement. Mm. Mr. Speaker, we know that the budget statement is a mechanism of accountability. Mm. When the Honorable Minister for Finance appeared before this House, he accounts to the House how he utilized the funds that were approved for the immediate preceding financial year. Mm -hmm. He also seeks and gives explanation for the House to approve the policies and estimates for a particular financial year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, accountability requires probity, which is a moral rectitude or integrity of the person who is doing the accounting and therefore requires clarity and specificity on his part. These are three critical elements of accountability. Mr. Speaker, in this year's budget statement, which was delivered by the Honorable Minister for Finance, he mentioned in paragraph 153, and with your permission, I beg to quote, the state is facilitating the process by providing the land, the secretariat, and seed money for the preparatory phase of the construction of the National Cathedral, unquote. Mr. Speaker, I have reviewed the budget statement itself, and there is no statement whatsoever which relates to the National Cathedral. In other words, there has been no request for any estimates to be approved by this House for its construction. Mr. Speaker, a number of critical questions may be asked at this point in time because the Honorable Minister for Finance mentioned it, but it is not contained in the budget statement. I would want to ask four critical questions about the budget statement. Mr. Speaker, the first one is, what is the value of the land to be provided by the state? I am aware that 21 townhouses that were built to house our judges will be demolished for purposes of the construction of the National Cathedral. Mr. Speaker, another critical question is, what is the cost of running the Secretariat for the entire duration of the construction of the National Cathedral. That has neither been stated in the statement of the Honorable Minister for Finance before this House, nor in the budget statement. How much is the seed money to be provided by the state? And as it is stated as a line item in this year's budget, mm -hmm. there is no line item with respect to the construction of the National Cathedral. Mr. Speaker, so this is a critical issue of accountability because the Honorable Minister for Finance cannot purport on our behalf to make monies available for the construction of the National Cathedral without the approval of Parliament. That will be against the grain of Article 178 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. If any money is allocated as seed money for the construction of the National Cathedral, that will be unconstitutional. Mr. Speaker, I have researched 
on this matter, and the Financial Times of London has reported that the total cost of construction of the National Cathedral will be $100 million. I have the report, and I'll make it available to the table office. Okay. The details so, of the construction so summary, have been given. He's saying that mentioning an intention for partnership yes. without giving the details is not on. Okay, so this is 2018. So, so this is 2018. Fair enough. 28 November 2018. We asked these questions. I've heard some people say that, oh, but the minority was sitting in parliament when the minister came and announced this paradigm shift that mm. is no longer uh, mm. an entirely president's uh, agenda, private contribution, but the state is going to partner. Uh, why didn't they raise an objection? Here you have it. 28 November 2018, the minority raised objection that, look, you have to make provision. There has to be a line item Fair enough. In, the, in the budget. Fine. So 2018, it was said, nothing happened. Now, yes. you are alleging that there are two payments that have been made. The first one you put out was the recent one, which was 25 31st million. March 2022. Yes. Good. Now, what evidence did you put out to confirm this? So, so I put out what is known in the industry as a warrant signed by the Honorable Minister for Finance, Ken Ufuriata. And this is uh, instructing the controller and accountant general to release 25 million Ghana cities. I'll read the first two paragraphs. The caption is, seed money for the construction of the National Cathedral. This letter is dated 31st March 2022. Please refer to letter number SCRDE32960-02, dated 17th March 2022, from the Chief of Staff, Office of the President, National Cathedral of Ghana's memo dated 28 March 2022 on the above subject. Copies mm -hmm. attached. Two, authority is hereby granted you to release the sum of 25 million Ghana cities as additional seed money. Additional seed money. So this shows that some money had been released mm. already. As additional seed money to the National Cathedral Secretariat for the construction of the National Cathedral for so part I, payment of a standing are you saying claim that for you rebate not limited. aware that the government had said that they would do an initial seed payment for the cathedral? I thought that was made known in the public domain. You see, you, you, see didn't, you didn't have we, that information? We, as members of parliament, all 270, including NPP members of parliament, they cannot show you any provision. I've brought all President Akufuado's budget here. All six budgets he has presented to parliament. They are all here. There is no provision for National Cathedral. No line item. No allocation. If you ask any of the 275 MPs in the Ghanaian parliament, how much is this seed capital? They can't tell you. This partnership, what does it entail? What is the percentage? Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? 70-30? 80-20? We of, cannot tell but you. Were you aware that it was initially supposed to cost 100 before it was revised to 200 million? That, that no. was in the public domain, was it not? Again, those are in the public domain. I have here uh, a publication. Finance visa says $100 million. Financial Times of London. Then the secretary to the board of trustees says $200 million. I have also seen other documents. So you're saying that $350 million. It's not stated in the line item in yes. the budget. You, parliament does not know. Parliament does not know. It's unconstitutional. You cannot take out money from the consolidated fund without approval. What the, the finance visa has done is an egregious. But, but we know it's from the consolidated fund. Can I see the letter you were, you were. Is this stated where the money is coming from? It's certainly not coming from the Board of Trustees. This is mm. the Finance Minister writing to the Controller and Accountant General. So obviously from the Consolidated Fund. Ob ob obviously from the Consolidated Later, earlier this week, you also put out something in relation to a, an, initial, an or initial payment of $32 million. Yes. So after this release, we also intercepted another document. This is from the Office of the President. And there's a stash of documentation we have money to obtain from the office of the president and we are serializing those documents as you can see uh, the document reveals what we have put out now reveals that a whopping 32 million 70,103 Ghana cities and two pesos has been paid I have your status paid so it's been paid in full to Sir David Ajay and Associates Limited as far back as 2021. This is Office of the President actuals from January to 9th December 2021. And the transaction details are provided as follows. Payment of consultancy services on new bids opening and interviewing of contractors rendered on the National Cathedral project. The GIFMIS code 
is 2210801. So this 32 million Ghana cities was paid Sir David Ajay and Associates. And you see, look, the number of laws that are being broken here with impunity. So you do know that when public funds are being released to contractors, they should have gone through a bidding process. Mm -hmm. There's a procurement law in Ghana. The procurement law is being flagrantly disregarded. So the procurement law was not followed. Then, Sir David Ajayi himself, it is only on the 26th of April this year mm. that government put out a statement. That is the Minister for Works and House, the Honorable Asen Subwachi, that Sir David Ajayi has now been enrolled into the role of architects. And, so and this so, 32 million, what date was it? And paid? so this is 20, 2021. This, we have the actuals for January to 9th, December 2021. And it's only this year, 26th April this year, the Daily Graphic reported it, viewers can Google it, that David Ajay is now legally So are you saying allowed, the payment was made allowed, before Asensu came to make this point? Yes, that, that David Ajay can practice in Ghana. I'm, I'm not taking anything away from his you know, competence, his international prowess. He's brought a lot of pride and honor to our country. You can't take that away from his practice, uh, his practice abroad. His work speaks for, 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 for him. Uh, and that's why I think that what is happening in Ghana, what he's lending himself to, does not even do that image any good. So you have here the procurement law being broken, and then you also have... Uh, other professional laws being treated Fair with, with utter contempt. I, I, I need to and don't forget that all of these are happening in 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 violent violation of Fair Article enough. 178 of we, the We'll Nigerian take a Nigerian breather. When we come back, we'll hear from John Kuma. He's the Deputy Minister for Finance. He's been speaking to us on this matter. He has reactions to some of the points the MP has raised. This is a point of view. Stay with us. So, Honorable John Kuma is the MP for Ejisu. He is also the Deputy Minister for Finance. Uh, we want to find out from him why the National Cathedral is a priority of priorities and what his reactions are to some of the points that have been made around the expenditures made in relation to the Cathedral. Honorable John Kuma, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Bernard, and greetings to your viewers and listeners. So, the President recently said the National Cathedral was a priority of his priorities. Can you explain and justify why this cathedral is a priority at this time? Yes, thank you. Uh, Bernard, I think there are two strong reasons why the National Cathedral remains a priority of His Excellency the President. First of all, it has a strong biblical basis. And secondly, it has a strategic economic importance to Ghana in terms of our development and growth. And the reason I talk about the biblical basis but I've heard about the minority uh, complaining and quoting the Bible as if God dwells in the hearts of men who doesn't require a physical place of worship. If you read Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 7 to 13, it was God himself who asked David and Israel to build him a permanent place of worship and that uh, they could no longer keep the Ark of Covenant in tent and tabernacles. Okay, and even when David expressed joy and enthusiasm to build it, God told him that he didn't qualify to build him a house, and that his son, when he passed on, his son could build him that house. And when you read First Kings chapter five, verse three to five, uh, when Solomon became king three years into his reign, he actually started building that house to keep the covenant between his father and God, which established David's kingdom forever. And, and it's not just about that alone. When you read the last chapter of Isaiah, chapter one, uh, the last chapter of Isaiah, which is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1, God says that the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And where is the house that thou hast built for me? And where in is my resting place? So there are several quotations in the Bible that God requires us to build him of a place uh, like a cathedral or a worship center where we we'll honor him. And if anybody thinks that 
these quotations are in the Old Testament, so they don't really apply. If you read Luke chapter 7, verse 5, uh, when Jesus was on earth and doing miracles and busy, uh, there was one centurion whose servant was not well. And the entire Jewish community and their elders went to petition Jesus. That if you read 7, verse 5 of Luke, he says that this man loved our nation and has built us a, a synagogue. A synagogue is like a cathedral. And because of that, Jesus took everything he was doing to attend to this man. So when you look into the Bible, there are strong bases why mm. we can have something like a synagogue or a national cathedral in honor of God. But that's not just the reason. But the strategic economic importance why we must have this project as a country is that, first of all, one, it will promote religious tourism. Okay. And elsewhere, when we check, if you, we have done the revenue projection, and within 10 to 15 years, Ghana will recover every penny that we'll put into this project and even begin to make gains out of it. And, and, and then it's also an asset backed expenditure. I mean, many people have questioned why Ghana we borrow money and we can't see what we have done with the money because much of the expenditures are spent on consumption. When you spend your expenditures on asset backed infrastructure, like the monument of a national cathedral, it is backed by an asset, and so you can always recover that investment. It's, just, it's not different from the roads you are building, or hospitals, or schools, or even, let me say, the National Theatre we built, which today we have recovered the cost of that mm. National Theatre. I see. And it's a benefit to the country. I I'm sure we can have a, a, a biblical debate about the concept of cathedral, because you did quote a New Testament scripture, but if you really read Paul very carefully, in Corinthians, he refers to your body as a temple of God. He also says in Acts 17 that God does not dwell in temples made by hands. And it's, it's interesting that almost all the quotations you gave were in the Old Testament. And even your New Testament quotation was about a synagogue. But that's not even my, my focus. The second point you made about the, 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 the tourist attraction. We have so many cathedrals in the country. And I'm not sure how many of them have tourism potential. And the basis for which you made your projection that will be able to pay back in the number of years you mentioned. Which of the religious monuments we have so far have generated any return for you to use that as a basis for your calculation? Well, um, uh, first of all, uh, whether Old or New Testament, the Word of God this remains the same. And if building a synagogue establishes a covenant between man and God, building a covenant, a, a national monument or a national cathedral equally establishes a strong and those christians who say that we must god dwells in the hearts of men why do they go to church on sundays to worship god and when they go they have to build a church then they should just worship god in their heart and there'll be no need for us to start building so let's not go into that argument the issue about the religious importance i haven't seen any specific cathedral in Ghana, which has been built with the kind of purpose that we have set for this particular national monument. Okay, this is being built with the mind of having a Bible museum, uh, a certain comparison with even the original, the Solomon Temple in Israel. So many of us who go on pilgrimage to Israel, we, we are privileged to go and pray a lot. Uh, and we want to have similar uh, uh, if you remember, even the foundation, we had to bring certain stones, uh, Jerusalem stones, as a symbol. And, and so we are building this particular project with the purpose of promoting religious tourism. And that is what makes this one different, in addition to the Bible Museum and other attachments, which are deliberate and, and mm. which will serve that purpose of tourism attraction. Okay. And, and, okay, so. so let's get into some of the other issues. Uh, Okuja Tua Blackwa has shown us a letter or extracts of a letter dated 31st March authorizing controller to release 25 million cities as additional funding for the cathedral. I, the question is, I mean, this happened a week after Minister Ofuriata announced 12 measures by government to help the economy revive. I, I recall these were cost-casting measures amid general economic hardship. 
And I don't need to go through the 12. A lot of people know what these 12 are, including cut of discretionary spending, cut in fuel allocation, suspension of payments of imported fuel. So they were quite elaborate. So the impression we got was that government was having a fiscal challenge and therefore these very difficult but necessary cuts. Is it true that on 31st March, just a week after that announcement was made, he authorized this 25 million? And if he did, would that not be such a contradiction? Just a week after announcing these very difficult cuts, you go ahead and make a 25 million CD payment for a cathedral. Well, um, uh, first of all, uh, yes, the amount uh, measures, but it didn't mean that we were not going to spend that same week if we check. The road and into the water. We were paid. Uh, several commitments from MMDA, uh, ministry departments, uh, that put in requests were paid. Uh, the, so we did not announce measures that so to say that Ghana wasn't going to spend at all. But we were going to spend on priority uh, projects that governments were committed to. So um, uh, it, it didn't mean that we were not going to spend at all. And we see a lot of um, uh, importance in, in payment or in this particular payment to achieve the objective of government priorities. Uh, so, um, yes, it is true. Uh, and for us, this payment stayed within the expenditure uh, uh, objective of government. He, he also claims that apart from that 25 million, there was an original 32 million paid to Sir David Ajay, bringing a total payment to 57 million. Is this correct? Uh, well, yes. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with the payments that we have made to. Uh, so what, let me say towards the construction, design, architecture, and construction of the National Cathedral, which is 100% government-owned and, and remains a priority of government. And uh, I've had the erroneous uh, comment that this was not captured in Parliament, which is false. Uh, the Minister of Finance has always announced uh, how we're going to build this National Cathedral. And even though it may not be captured as a budget item because not maybe under any specific MDA, if it's not under a ministry or agency or a department, it can form part of government expenditures as long as we have captured it in the budget that we are going to provide seed funding. And the 32 million that he refers to, he himself says that it was paid from the office of president. So it's already a budget item provided in the budget that. Uh, was used for that purpose, which is legal. So it just shows this lack of understanding mm. of how financial uh, mm. uh, budgets are done. Well, he, uh, he, he, actually, he actually makes reference to the debate in Parliament when the 2018 budget speech was read, when the partnership issue came up first. Apparently, Dominic Haini had raised the point about the lack of a line item. So yes, it was mentioned that this was going to be a partnership, but usually one would expect a line item. That's why when he comes to the 2022 budget, he points to the appendix that shows the government list of priorities and the cathedral is not in that list. So the, the appendix of this year's budget, I think it's page 260 something, it does not mention the cathedral. Is that not odd? That if it's, a, 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 if it's in the budget as an intended partnership, should it not be listed in the line item so we know exactly how much is going to be spent? Not at all. It depends. If government is treating it as a flagship program, then you need that line item. Or if government is treating it under a specific ministry or agency, uh, then you need that line item. But if government is treating it as one of its priority under a specific item which is already provided, then you don't need that specific. You just have to uh, talk about it as we have done. So there's nothing illegal. Uh, or irregular about about how the National Cathedral mm. have been handled. And just finally on that point, also he, he makes the point that usually when the, a board is inaugurated, if it has anything to do with government, the board comes to parliament. When the board for the cathedral was put together, it was seen as a private initiative and therefore did not require any parliamentary notification or approval. 
So is it that the position has changed since the original board was set up and that the board will be brought to parliament? Or your understanding of a partnership means that it does not need to come to parliament at all? Not at all. I don't know which board went to parliament. Maybe it should have been specific. This is not a board established by an act. Uh, it's a board that the finance minister can set up uh, as a trustee, as a secretariat. In fact, uh, it should be being called it, uh, a so-called board because in the Bible we refer to it as a secretariat, okay, which will run the operations and supervise the construction and ensure ownership of the project to the Christian community. So uh, I don't see, I don't know which act or law he's referring to that requires parliamentary ratification of that. <laughs> this is not an international agreement or arrangement. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing irregular about that arrangement. And we already implemented that, that secretariat and that we're going to put in seed money and, and that we're going to work in partnership with the private sector. And let me put this also well. That when government says that we work with the private uh, or partnership, it doesn't mean that partnership means that we have nothing to put in. We also have to put in. And even when we raise private funds, they will still be public funds. Even though they are privately raised, mm. they are still going to be public funds because we are raising it for and on behalf of Ghanaians. And we will have to account for everything or personal. But, but, whether we but Honorable Kuma, that, that's, that's fair private. enough. But we are told that there was private or there's fundraising that has gone on. Is it that they haven't raised money for which reason government is making the initial payment? So even if it's a partnership, again, back to the issue of the fact that government is going to financial difficulties. If they've raised money from donors and other religious institutions, could it not for a cash flow reason be more prudent for those monies to be spent first? And then when later government finances are in a better position, then the government comes to support. So is it that the fundraiser didn't raise anything at all or that the money is not ready to be spent? For which reason government is having to spend 57 million ab in issue and we haven't heard of any private money in it yet? Well, you, um, well government uh, continues to work with the uh, secretary and the private sector to raise more funding. In fact, recently, His Excellency the President and the Finance Minister were in the U.S. Uh, to raise uh, more funding, I think, in Houston, in one of the fundraising events, and, and as well as the local churches that continue to contribute. So I think at the right time, all these uh, details and accounting of how much were raised privately into the public funds will all come. But at the end of the day, whether we raise it privately or we raise it publicly, it's all public funds, and it has to come through the same budgeting process and the same releasing processes for the Ministry of Finance. So uh, there's nothing really a big deal about it. And, and like I said, everything that we raise, whether publicly or privately, which is still a public fund, will still be recovered within a very short period, 10 to 15 years after we have completed the project. All right. We, we, one of the reasons we are speaking to you this way is because of your schedule. Apparently, you are, you are supposed to be in Senegal. What's going on in Senegal? Uh, yes, uh, Ghana is a co-chair, and we needed to be part of the inter. It's called GIABA, intergovernmental West African countries on interministerial action on money laundering and counterterrorism, uh, in partnership with uh, FITA, uh, FATA, uh, which is the international financial institutions that monitor anti-money laundering. Ghana is the chair, so I had to. Uh, come with others to represent the government of Ghana at an ECOWAS Jabba meeting. All right, I'm sure we'll talk properly soon. Thank you for talking to us. Yeah, th th thank you very much. Uh, very much. So, John so that was uh, John Kuma from the Ministry of Finance. This is still the point of view. I still have uh, Okutatwa Blacker here. I'm sure you have a few reactions. Your Bible has appeared on the on the table. It wasn't here before. Yes. Where, where did it emerge from? It's, it's, it's always in my car with me, uh, my ever-reliable companion. So it's, a, it's a huge Bible. So, so, so I'm so, sure you want to react to some of the, the things yes. you said about the... the yes, there are lots of issues. Look, first of all, let's be clear. 
John Kuma has engaged in a lot of evasiveness, in a lot of sophistry, uh, wanting to portray me as uh, somebody who doesn't understand the processes in Parliament. He, he should take his time. He just joined us. I have worked on 10 budgets. We have approved 10 budgets since I joined Parliament. He's just worked on his second budget. So if there is anybody who should understand the processes due to experience, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you would defer to senior members of the House. Look, he talks about partnership, that partnerships don't really feature in the budget. It's not true. If you come to pay 244 of the 2022 budget, mm -hmm. USTAT is a partnership at Appendix 4C. Parliament approved figures for this partnership. The government told us that they expect to raise 614 million 912,000 from our development partners. So it's there. Then they said that they would contribute GOG 282 million and then they will take another 103 million from ABFA. It's there before we approved it. You start. That's a partnership. So what is so special about this partnership that we can't have numbers? That's not how parliament works. That mm. is no look, there's no parliament in this world that will just work with the finance minister's word that, oh, we are going to form some partnership. And listen to him, that you, you will come back to parliament after you have spent in our name. As we speak, you are talking about seed capital. This, by the time we finish our serialization... Mm. Well, it, and it have will, there been more will, payments? There have been more payments. Beyond running, the 57? Yes. Running into hundreds of millions of Ghana cities. Are you aware, Ben, that we had to relocate the passport office which we had renovated not too long ago. You know, I'm ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, so I followed that process closely. It cost us 10 million Ghana cities to relocate the passport office to where it is now, near uh, GIJ. Then the judges' bungalow, we had to demolish it, then relocate the judges, about 20 of them. We are paying for their rent, expensive rent, at prime location in Accra. Then we are constructing apartments for the judges in cantonments. Then we also had to wow. go into an agreement with the Malian government. Mm -hmm. Ben, will you believe that we told the Malian government that we will get them a land at airport residential and build a new mm. ambassador's residence for them? So far, the land has been secured. You know how much land costs at airport residential. The Malian government is waiting for their ambassador's residence. That is not all. You see, the level of recklessness, Ben, let me reveal for the first time that this National Cathedral project, which is so close to the conference center, the Accra International Conference Center, we have been told that, and you, you heard John Kuma repeat it this evening, that the National Cathedral will serve other purposes for conventions, conferences, and all of that, so that we can get our money back. So the sitting capacity will be about 5,000. Will you believe, Ben, that as we speak, government is making arrangements to raise down the Accra International Conference Center, demolish it, and construct a new one? Are you serious? If you come to, you come with me to, I'm, I'm dead. This is 2022 budget. I'm dead serious. This is now the 2021 budget. Last year. 20, yes. At page 251. Appendix 10C, approved project program list to be contracted from concession and non-concessional external loans mm. for 2021 and the medium 10. You have item 10, construction of the new Accra International Conference Center, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. It's going to cost us 165 million funded, euros. Funded by who? Through a concessional facility. It will, be, it will be a loan. And the, well, and is it your contention that if there's a 5,000 capacity... So, National Cathedral, we need a new, but it's not meant to be a so, conference center. So, so, a cathedral so is not the same as a conference center. Look, this is a country that is going through the worst economic crisis in living memory. The president himself has admitted that. Hmm. The vice president, head of the economic management team, you saw the CFR sovereign risk report only last week, which puts Ghana in a debt distress category, that we are in the league of countries like Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Argentina, that they are not sure we can pay back our debts. The IMF is projecting that 
debt to GDP ratio will hit 84.6 percent by mm. close of year. Mm. So we are in a precarious situation. Look at inflation, 23.6 percent, and still going up. Many people believe it's even higher. This is a government that cannot pay national service personnel. It cannot pay NAPCO trainees for seven months now. National health insurance is in arrears, more than two billion. School feeding caterers cannot be paid. They are still asked to feed their children at 97 pesos per child. What, what can 97 pesos do? They are asking for a raise to two Ghana cities. Government says they don't have the money. This is a government that cannot print test books for three years. It was only this morning, in this morning's newspapers, that we were told that some contract is not being signed. Three years, textbooks have not been provided. Capitation grant is in arrears for more than two years. I mean, so you have all these statutory obligations you cannot meet. And you tell us that, I mean, this is, is, is a priority. We, are, we understand the minority has invited or asked for the Minister of Finance to appear before Parliament. Do you have indication he's going to do that anytime soon? He, he has no choice. Uh, he has to. Um, already he's a candidate for a vote of censure. Um, there are serious considerations. A vote of censure? A vote of censure. Why? Yes. He, he's, he's violated Article 178. I mean, look. But does our Lord judge a man before it hears him? That is why we are giving him the opportunity to be heard with our questions. And under Order 64-2, he has 10 working days to appear. Uh, we filed this question on Friday. But does he have to Friday. appear himself? Can his deputy not appear for him? No, he has to appear himself. Is that what the, is that what the standing yes, order says? Yes, the, the standing order is very clear. Yes. So the, you expect him to appear in Parliament in 10 working days? Yes, in 10 working to days. To answer which specific question? So we have filed three questions. Two stand in my name. The other stands in the name of the Honorable Kwame Abuja. The Honorable Kwame Abuja is interested in all the procurement breaches. Related to this project. Relating to this project. And your questions are? My, my questions are the total cost and the legal basis. So total cost, legal basis for the uh, actual construction. The there's a view, there's a view, the, the, the there's a view that since Parliament is a house of record, you probably should have waited for him to turn up to answer your questions in Parliament before coming to media. I mean, we are in media. We're happy mm -hmm. to, for you yeah. to talk to us. But there's a view being expressed by some that if you've put these key questions to him and he's supposed to appear in 10 days, why not wait for him to come before prejudicing his answer by going to the public to reveal these things? N n not at all. Uh, it is important. Look, we are the people's representative. Parliament is not some court or some secret chamber. We work with the people and we must always account to the people. We are for full transparency. We are calling for full transparency and we cannot be engaged in conduct that does not promote transparency. We gave the finance minister the opportunity during the debate of this budget. He ignored us. Dr. Dominic Ayeni was, was also at pains. The honorable minority leader, Harun Ayeni, oh, re re-echoed it. He was there. Didn't say a word. Treated our concerns with contempt. So we thought that, okay, he'll back off. There will be no financial commitment until such a time that he comes, does the appropriate thing, uh, abides by Article 178. We then know the numbers. Look. It's not only about even approvals. It's also about tracking. We must know how much. Look, there has to be a debate. From the documents I have reviewed, it is clear to me that the fundraising is not going well and that government has decided, the president has decided that the people of Ghana should fund this cathedral. That's, that's what I'm saying. In its entirety? We're spending hundreds of billions. How much has been spent so far, do you know? Hundreds of millions. You are saying there's more we, than 57. Yes, I just wanted to know. We, we, we are serializing. We are serial so this yes. is more like a, a, a TV show now. But if, this is, if, if, it, if you have information that is critical to saving the public press, why are you serializing it as if it's all? That's, that's why, you see, it is important to let them know that we have the information. And we have adopted this approach because of the initial contemptuous nature of the finance minister. Now we are seized with a lot of information and we want him to know, to be on notice, that look, you can't come and muddy the waters, or as it were, fudge issues, like his deputy is doing in this interview where he's beating around the bush. We want them to know that we have the facts and we expect nothing but forthrightness and, and thorough transparency. And Ben, if you allow me to quote First Chronicles chapter Let me 28. Let me finish on the, on, the, on the conference. Ben, what we could two fails to tell you about the current International Conference Center is that it's sinking. Uh, I believe he says there was a committee that went there to look at the potential tragedy waiting to happen. So to now cite it as if it's some profligate expenditure may be disingenuous. Our so point, you know that the conference is not in a good shape. Our point is mm -hmm. that 
the conference center not being in a good shape. Mm -hmm. It could have been part of this, this project. It's in the same enclave. And we'll even have saved a lot of money. Could have been part of the cathedral project? Yes. It Expanded could have, it, cathedral. It could, it could have been cited there so that you save money. You don't have to go and be demolishing judges' buildings, demolishing the passport office. I see. Uh, the, 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 uh, and demolishing the Malian residence. So you are aware that the, the, the conference center is not being replaced for, for trivial reasons and that there is a problem? The, the conference center should not be replaced now, should not be replaced separately from the national cathedral project that's the point we are making I see. what's your quote if we have closed what's... in first chronicles chapter 28 oh you're also doing old testament verses two and three i see i'll come to new testament no we don't have time so you just end you should be quoting this from your head you should be reading it as a former su vice president i'll quote matthew from my head <laughs> in first chronicles chapter 28 verse two and three then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, in verse 3, mm -hmm. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. So it's not always that God will accept a temple just because you, you are building a temple if you don't follow right processes. That's why in Proverbs chapter 23, mm, verses 1, 2, and 3, when he said the, 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 the heart of the king is in his hand, he also said mm, that the Lord prefers justice and rightness and fairness before offering. So if you don't follow due process, you are breaking the laws. I mean, look, if there's any project that we should have approached with holiness, purity, and not the usual shenanigans of corruption. Maybe, maybe we should do a, it should be this project. We should do a Bible quiz between it should, you, look, we you, want to, you and uh, we want, Kuma, we since we you want, are both We coaching. want a house of God that will bring us blessings, not one that will okay. bring us curses I because see. of corruption. Thank you, uh, Ogojatua Blackwa. He's the MP for North Town, and he is a ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And we had... Earlier on the phone, John Kuma, MP for Ejiso, Deputy Minister of Finance. Thank you for watching. So, nice edition of the show. We'll see you next time.